I find here that Don Pedro has come this night to be seen. He is very near by this. He was not three leagues off when I left him. How many gentlemen have you lost in this action? But few of any sort and none of name. Victory starts itself when the Chiver finds home. Fight. Chiver brings home full numbers. I find here that Don Pedro has bestowed much honor on the old Florentine guard Claudio. Much deserved on his part and equally rem remembered by Don Pedro, he hath borne himself in the promise of his age, doing in the figure of a lamb in the feats of a lion. He hath indeed better, better the expectation than you must expect of me to tell you how. He has an uncle here in Messina. He will be much glad. I have already delivered him letters. There appears much joy in him, even so much joy that cannot show itself modest enough without a badge of bitterness. Did you break down in tears? In great measure. A kind overflow of kindness. There's no faces truer than has been washed. How much better is the weep of joy than the joy of weeping? Has Mr. Fancy Fighter returned from the wars or no? I know none of that name, lady. There's none such of any sort in the army. What is it you speak of, miss? My cousin means Senior Benedict of Padua. Oh, he's returned then, as pleasant as ever he was. He set up his bills here in Messina and challenged Cupid at the flight. And my uncle's fool, receiving the challenge, so scarred for Cupid and challenged him at the bird bolt. I pray you, how many men hath he killed and eaten in these wars? But how many hath he killed? For indeed, I promised me. All of his killing. Faithless, you tax your bed too much. He will be meet with you, I doubt not. He hath done a good service, lady, in these wars. You had musty victual, and he hath put to eat it. He is a very valiant treacherman. He hath an excellent stomach. A good soldier, too, lady. And a good soldier to a lady, but what is he to a lord? A lord to a lord, a man to a man, stuffed with all honorable virtue. <laughs> it is so indeed. He is no less than a stuffed man, but for the stuffing, well, we are all mortal. You must not, mis sir. You must not mistake my niece. There is a merry war between each other, betwixt each other. They never meet, but there's a scornish wit between each other. Alas, he gets nothing by that. In our last conflict, four of his five wits were halting off, and now the whole man is governed by one. So if he have enough wit to keep himself warm, let him bear for a difference between himself and his horse. For it is all the wealth he hath left to be known a reasonable creature. But who is his companion now? Is there no young square who make a voyage with him to the devil? He is most in the company of the right noble Claudio. Oh, Lord, he will hang upon him like a disease. He is sooner caught in the pestilence, and the taker runs presently mad. God help the noble Claudio, for if he have caught the Benedict, it will cost him a thousand pounds ere be cured. I will hold friends with you, lady. Do, good friend. You will never run now, No, not till our January. Don Pedro is approached. Good Senor Leonardo, you have come to meet your trouble, and the fashion of the world is to avoid costs, but you encounter it. <laughs> Never came trouble to my house the likeness of your grace. For trouble being gone, to come from Shimei. When you depart, sorrow buys and happiness takes his leave. You embrace your charge too willingly. I think this is your daughter. Her father, her mother has many times told me so. Were you in doubt, sir, that you asked her? No, Senor, for then you were just a child. You have a fool, Benedict. We may guess by this what you are, being a man. Truly, the lady fathers herself. Be happy, lady. You are like an honorable father. If Senor Leonardo be her father, she would not have her head on her shoulders for all of Messina, as like as she is. I wonder that you still be talking, Senor Benedict. Nobody marks you. What, my dear lady, the stain? Are you yet living? Is it possible the stain should die while she has no food to meet at Senor Benedict? Courtesy itself must convert to disdain if you are yet in her presence. Then courtesy is a turncoat. But it is certain I am loved of all ladies, only you excepted. And I would, I could, find in my heart that I have not a hard heart, for truly I love not. A dear happiness to women. They had also been troubled with a pernicious suitor. I thank God in my cold blood that I know your humor for that. I'd rather hear my dog bark at a crow than a man swear he loves me. God, <laughs> God, keep your ladyship still in that mind, so some gentleman or other shall escape a pedestrian of scratched face. This scratching could not make it worse, of course, such a piece is worse. Well, you're a rare pair, teacher. Well, that bird of my tongue is better than a beast of yours. I wouldn't mind horse at the speed of your tongue and so good a continuer. But keep in your way, in God's name, I have done. You always end with a day's trick. I know you will. That is the sum of all, Leonardo. Senor Claudio and Senor Bentley. Leonardo hath reminded us all. I tell him we shall stay here at least a month, and he heartily prays some occasion may detain us longer. I dare swear, he's no good friend, but praise him himself. If you swear, Lord, I sh they shall not be forsworn. For, for being reconciled to your brother, I, your prince, I owe you all day. I thank you. I'm not of many words, but I thank you. Please leave your grace. Leave on. Your hand, Leonardo. We will go together. Benedict. It's 
not the daughter of Signor Leonardo. I noted her not, but I looked on her. She not a modest young lady. Do you question me, as an honest man should do, for my simple true judgment? Or would you have me speak after my custom? Is being a professed tyrant to their sex? No, no, I pray thee, speak in sober judgment. Why, in faith? Methinks she's too low for a high praise, too brown for a fair praise, and too little for a great praise. Only this commendation I can afford her, that were she other than she is, she were unhandsome, and being no other but as she is, I do not like her. Thou thinkest I am in sport. I pray thee, tell me how truly thou likest her. Would you buy her that you inquire after her? Can the world buy such a jewel? Uh, yeah, in a case to put it into. But speak you this with a sad brow, or do you play the flouting jack, to tell us Cupid is a good hair finder and Vulcan a rare carpenter? Come, and what key shall a man take you? To go into the song? In mine eyes, she is the sweetest lady that I ever looked on. I can see yet without spectacles, and I see no such matter. <laughs> no such matter. There's her, there's her cousin, and if she were not possessed with a fury, exceeds her in beauty as much as the first of May, doth the last of December. I hope you have no intent to turn husband, have you? Now I would scarce trust myself, and though I had sworn the contrary, if Hare would be my wife. Why, in faith, it's come to this. Hath not the world one man but will wear his cap of suspicion? Shall I never see a bachelor of threescore again? Go to, in faith, and thou wilt need to thrust thy neck into a yoke, and wear the print of it, and sigh away Sundays. Look, Don Pedro's return to seek you. What secret have you held here that you follow not to lean out of? I would your grace would constrain me to tell. I charge thee on thy allegiance. You hear, Count Claudio, I can be as secret as a dumb man. I would have you think so, but on my allegiance, mark you this, on my allegiance, he is in love with you, now that is your grace's part. Part. Mark how short his answer is with Hera, Leonardo's short daughter. If this were so, so it would be. Like the old tale, my lord, it was not, it was not so, and which was not so, but indeed, God forbid, it should be so. If my passion changed not shortly, God forbid it should be otherwise. You got a frog in your throat, guys? <laughs> Amen, if you love her, the lady is very well worthy. You speak this to fetch me in, my lord. By my troth, I speak my thought. And in faith, my lord, I spoke mine. And by my two faiths and trials, my lord, I spoke mine. <laughs> that I love her, I feel. That she's worthy, I know. But I neither know how she should be loved, nor feel how she should be worthy. It is the opinion that fire will not melt out of me, I will die in it at the stake. That was ever an obstinate heritage in his body's beauty. And never could maintain his part, but in the force of his will. That a woman conceived me, I thank her. That she brought me up, I likewise give her most humble thanks. But all women will have to pardon me, for I'm not willing to be made a fool of. I will do myself the right to trust none, and do them the wrong to mistrust any. And the fine is, which I may go the finer, I, I will live a bachelor. I shall see thee ere I die, look pale with love. With anger, with sickness, or with hunger, my lord, and not with love. Prove that I ever lose more blood with love than I get again with drinking. Pick up my eyes with the Ballard Maker's pen and hang me at the brothel house for the sign of blind Cupid. Well, if ever thou didst fall from this faith, thou wilt prove a notable argument. If I do, hang me in a bottle like a cat and shoot at me. And he that hits me, let him be clapped on the shoulder and called Adam. Well, as time shall try, in time the savage bull doth bear the yoke. The savage bull may, but if ever the sensible Bennett bear it, pluck off the bull's horns and set them in my forehead, and let me be vilely painted. And in such great letters as they write, here is good horse to hire. And let them signify under my sign, here you may see Benedict, the married man. If this should happen, I would be one mad. Nay, if Cupid hath not spent all his quiver in Venice, thou wilt quake for this shortly. I look for an earthquake too, then. Well, you temporize with ours. In the meantime, good Senor Benedict, repair to Leonidas, commend me to him, and tell him I will not fail him at supper. For indeed, he hath made great preparation. I almost have enough in me for such an embossage, and so I commit you. To the tuition of God from my house, if I had it. The 6th of July, you love friend Benedict. Nay, mock not, mock not. The body of your discourse is sometimes guarded with fragments, and the guards are slightly basin on either. Ere you slap out ends any further, examine your, examine your conscience, and so I leave you. My liege, your highness now may do me good. My love is thine to teach. Teach it but how, and thou shalt see how apt it is to learn any hard lesson that may do thee good. Hath Leonardo any son, my lord? No child but Hera, she's his only heir. Dost thou affect her, Claudio? Oh, sweet prince, when you went onward on this entered action, I looked upon her with a soldier's eye. That like I had a rougher task in hand, and the drive liking to the name of love. But now I am returned, and that war thoughts have left their places vacant. In their rooms come thronging soft and delicate desires, all prompting me how young fair Hera is, saying, I like her, and I like her. 
Thou wilt be like a lover presently, and tire the hearer with a book of words. Thou dost love her, her, cherish it, and I will break with her and with her father, and thou shalt have her. Was not to this end that thou began to twist so fine a story? How sweetly you do minister to love. And no love's grieves by his complexion, but lest my liking too sudden seem, I would have fouled it with a longer treatise. What need the bridge much broader than the flood? Look, the fairest grants the necessity, and look, what full service fit, and I will fit thee with the remedy. I know we shall have reveling tonight, I will assume thy part in some disguise, and tell fair hair I am Claudio. The her bosom uncups my heart, and take the hearing prisoner with a force, and strong counter with my amorous tail. And the conclusion is, she shall be thine. In practice, let us put it presently. Fight this music. He is very busy about it. But, brother, I can tell you strange news that you yet dreamt of not. Are they good? <coughs> As even stamps them, they show well out what they have a good cover. The prince and Count Claudio were walking in a thick placed alley in mine orchard and was thus overheard by a man of mine. The prince discovered to Claudio that he loved my niece, your daughter, and meant to acknowledge it this night in advance. And if he found her accordant, he meant to take the tie by the top and break instantly with you of it. Not this man, the, the tortoise, so have any wit. A good shot, fellow. I was sent for him, and you question him yourself. No, no, we will hold it as a dream to acquaint yourself. Go you and tell her my daughter of it. <laughs> so that she be a better, better prepared for the answer. Go your daughter. There's no measure in the occasion that breeds, therefore the sadness is without limit. You should hear reason. And when I've heard it, what blessings bring it? If not a present remedy, at least a patient sufferance. I wonder if thou saying, as thou, be, as thou sayest thou art, born or sadder, and goest about to apply moral medicine to a mortifying mischief. I cannot hide what I am, I must be sad, when I've caused, and, sn and smile at no man's jest. Laugh. Eat when I have stomach, and wait for no man's leisure. Sleep when I am drowsy, and tend no man in his business. Laugh when I am merry, and claw no man in his humor. Yea, but you must not make the full show of this till you may do so without controlment. You have of late stood out against your brother, and he hath taken you newly into his grace, where it is impossible that you should take true root, but by the fair weather you make yourself. I'd rather be a canker in a hedge than a rose in his grace, and it better fits my blood to be disdained of all than to fashion a carriage for our love for many. Though it cannot be said that I'm a flattering, honest man, but I'm a plain dealing villain. I'm trusted with a muzzle and franchised with a clog. Therefore, I've decreed not to sing in my cage. If I had my mouth, I would bite. If I had my liberty, I would do my liking. In the meantime, let me be, and seek not to alter me. Can you make no use of your discontent? I make all use of it, for I use it only. Who comes here? <coughs> what news, Baraccio? <laughs> I came yonder from a great supper. Prince, your brother is roaring the entertainer, Leonardo, and I can give you intelligence of an attendant marriage. Will this serve for any model to be a mischief upon? What is he for a fool that drove himself to unquietness? Mary, it's your brother's right hand. Who, the most exquisite Claudio? Even he. A proper squire. And who and who? Which way looks he? Mary, on hair, the daughter and heir of Leonardo. A very forward march day. How came he to this? Being entertained for a perfumer as I was smoking in musty room, comes to me the prince and Claudio, hand in hand in sad conference. I whipped me behind the ass, and there heard it agreed upon that the prince should woo her for himself, and, having obtained her, give her to Count Claudio. Come, come, let us to there. This may prove food to my displeasure. That young starter path all the glory to my overthrow. If I can cross him any way, I bless myself every way. You both are sure and will assist me. To the death, my lord. Let us to the great supper. With the cookware of my mind shall we go prove what's to be done. We'll wait upon your lordship. 